Well, hello again. My name is Philip Harrelson. I'd like to welcome you back again to the Barnabas study. And i uh, been spending some videos time talking about Brother John Harrell, uh, the pastor, uh, previous pastor in uh, Bridge City, Texas. Um, he, uh, <clears throat> again, had a just tremendous impact on my life, so I'm honoring him. He passed away uh, last Thursday or last Friday night. And his funeral will be on February the 12th, this coming Monday, in fact, a week from today. And uh, so I, I just, again, I've written a number of blogs about Brother Harold, have intentions of writing some more um, here in the next several weeks. But uh, I thought I would just spend some time um, talking about him and the impact that he's had uh, on me. And obviously, uh, spent the previous time talking to you about Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, and Brother Harold's devotion to that and opened me up to that. But there were other books as well. And that's the part where that uh, if you're going to be a great preacher, you got to be a great reader. And Brother Harold had a tremendous library uh, that he had there at Bridge City. Of course, Hurricane Rita, I think it was, came through and uh, blew the roof off that place and practically just destroyed uh, his library, just saturated with rain for... 24, 48 hours, I don't remember exactly how much, but it was just a, a real loss. And then um, I think even uh, his books at home, uh, there was a, the, during that flooding that all took place, he lost a number of books in that, so his library really uh, got pared down uh, during all of that uh, trouble with that storm. Uh, but one of the things that Brother Harold did, besides uh, obviously talk to me about Pilgrim's Progress, was, was he talked to me about books on preaching. And um, I have some of those books uh, that are here uh, that Brother Harold mentioned. There's one set that I have at home, and uh, I, I intended on bringing it up here, but it slipped my mind. And that's Edward Dargan's. It's a two-volume set uh, called The History of Preaching. And uh, it was put together, Dargan was a student uh, of John Brodus. And uh, John Brodus' most famous book, probably, if you know, if you're a preacher, you may, may or may not be aware of this. But he wrote a book called On the Preparation and Delivery of Sermons. Brother Harold told me about that book. And uh, I already had a copy of it. I just had not read it. And so whenever Brother Harold talked to me about that book years ago, I pulled it out and uh, started working through that. John Brodus was the uh, president uh, of Southern Seminary, one of the early presidents in the, late, I think, maybe the late 1800s uh, there in Louisville, Kentucky. And, of course, the seminary is still in existence. The president now is, is Albert Moeller. Uh, but uh, Brother Harold told me about that book, John Brodus, on preparation and delivery of sermons. And then... Uh, Dargan was one of the students that followed Brodus. Uh, he was, in fact, he was one of Brodus' students. And so he did a very intensive study uh, on the history of preaching. In fact, I think he starts out maybe uh, with Augustine, maybe even goes back even prior to that, some of the early church fathers, and then just kind of tracks and follows through history about the history of preaching. And Brother Harold told me about that book. There was another author, and uh, this guy's name is David L. Larson, and uh, it's called Telling the Old, Old Story. Now, again, it's, <laughs> this is another book that I stuffed in my, in my back <laughs> pack and took it with me to the hospital and uh, it's marked up uh, it's dog eared it's, it's you know just uh, again but uh, Brother Harold recommended this book to me and I, I would commend this volume to you and uh, I thought about you know, some of the things that I normally do is is I'll put a link in the up under the videos and kind of help you track it down but I thought you know what I'm not going to do that with these books I, I'm going to let you track them down yourself, uh, just like I've had to track them down. Uh, because that's one thing Brother Harold told me one time. He said, you know, he said it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's the Internet has kind of spoiled us. And I think all of us now, we rely on Amazon and, and uh, Thrift Books, um, various other places where you can buy used books. But one of the things that Brother Harold told me was that it, sometimes it's in the joy of the hunt. 
and, uh, and that you're running around places, and I'm sure for him it probably was in Houston, uh, used bookstores, Pilgrim's, uh, Pilgrim publications over in Pasadena. Uh, they published all of um, of uh, Spurgeon's works, but but anyways, go go find this book telling the old old story. I will uh, maybe one of the spots that um, here <clears throat> that I underlined. Um, and, and again, here's the other part. When you start reading these books, if you'll track down and work with the bibliographies uh, that are in these books. And so in the back of this one, it's not called the bibliography, but it's called the notes uh, section. And it's on page 285, and it just starts. And you can see there, I've even got uh, underlined stuff there in the last. But again, this was a book uh, that I took with me to, to the hospital and read that. He told me about another book. Uh, that one's telling the old, old story, The Art of Narrative Preaching. Uh, he told me about another book. Now, this is a two-volume set. I do not have volume one because Brother Harold told me that volume two uh, was the better one of the, of the mix. And so this one uh, is called The Company of the Preachers, volume two. A History of Biblical Preaching from the Old Testament to the Modern Era. And uh, on the front of this, uh, obviously Charles Spurgeon, uh, then A.W. Tozer is on there. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the uh, sermon books in, in, in that. But it, again, this is another book that I bought uh, whenever I was at the library. I just ran across the name here, Alexander White, W-H-Y-T-E. If you're not familiar with the works of Alexander White, he was an old Scottish preacher, and uh, I've got his back right behind me. It's where I've got all my biographies, or not biographies, but my uh, character studies. And in the back of that, I've got a couple of copies. I've got a hardbound, and I've also got a paperback copy. Alexander White's volumes, uh, Old Testament, New Testament characters, excellent snapshots of biblical characters, and then up with the... Uh, uh, all of Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. I failed to mention the Holy War. Uh, that's an excellent, uh, if you hadn't read the Holy War, uh, it talks about, again, it's allegory form, talking about the, the capturing of man's soul, the assault on the five gates, the ear gate, eye gate. It's your senses is what he's talking about. And uh, then Alexander White has got, uh, there's a full little four volume set that he did on the characters of Pilgrim's Progress. But again, I found those just by, by talking to Brother Harold. And again, I, I just had 99% of the conversations that I had with Brother Harold, um, 98% of the conversations that I had with Brother Harold uh, was generally about preaching, was about books, um, he, he he enjoyed watches. He talked to me about watches. Uh, of course, I'm in the Timex category, and uh, he's a little bit higher up on the food chain than, <laughs> than what I am with that. But he enjoyed watches. He enjoyed pens. Uh, although he told me the older he got, his, his, his handwriting uh, kind of deteriorated, and I, and I get that. Uh, but, but again, it's just the books, the books. Uh, Larson's works, uh, Dargan's stuff, uh, John Brodus's stuff, and then here's some others that Brother Harold told me about. Now these are by Warren Wearsby. Uh, this is called "Listening to the Giants: A Good a Guide to Good Reading, and Great Preaching." Uh, this one is called "Living with the Giants." Uh, this one right here is called "Walking with the Giants." And then this one right here is called Giant Steps. Now, the deal with Giant Steps uh, is, I'll take that back. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of them is in the form, is kind of set up like a, um, I, I guess you kind of use it kind of as a devotional. But here's the thing that, that, that Brother Harold kind of kind of keyed me in on. And I guess I should have known, remembered this from nursing school and working at the hospital, especially with that 40-pound volume, Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, is, is, is the, the bibliographies, the sources, the footnotes, uh, is that Brother Harold told me you could find a lot uh, of just very good material. And uh, I'm afraid that the Internet may... Uh, 
it's convenient, it's helpful, it's useful, and obviously I'm coming to you from a form platform of social media. Uh, but I do think that he told me years ago, there's something about the joy of the hunt, that's what he called it, is to go into a bookstore and to nose around in uh, used books and start digging around and there are treasures that you can find. And he said there were times, he said, you may go in a bookstore and uh, you may not find anything. And then he said there may be other times where you would just go in there and the next thing you know, you're walking out with 25 books and uh, you would be able to, to use those. Because I do believe that a preacher's books are his tools. It's just like a carpenter uses hammers, saws, levels, all that sort of thing that they do. I believe that a good preacher ought to work with his books. And uh, so, so Brother Harold was very much, and so those books on the history of preaching, um, he kind of turned me on to that. Another author, he... he uh, uh, of course, Brother Jolly, Ernie Jolly, told me about Martin Lloyd Jones, and uh, I, it was I was a little slow uh, to get on to the Martin Lloyd Jones trail, but I think the older that I got, the more that I moved in toward that avenue was what does the Bible say? And uh, there were several biographies that that Brother Harold mentioned about Martin Lloyd Jones, and and at the time, you know, I was in my my thirties. Um, maybe mid thirties or so, you, you kind of, your reading tastes change. And, um, but again, I, I think if you, if you dig in and you find uh, these volume, these volumes, uh, Wearsby's uh, four volume set, uh, Larson's two volume set on preaching and then the one telling the old, old story. And if you track down uh, those because in a while ago when I was just just flipping through this uh, great company of preachers, um, I uh, ran across again. I thought that took that little side trail on uh, uh, Alexander White, uh, Brother Harold. Uh, after I found Alexander White, again you start talking to him about that. He was very familiar. Here's one, uh, Robert William Dale. Uh, if you have not found any of his material, uh, he is a good one to, to try to pursue and to come across. Chapter 11 in this book, The Glory and Agony of uh, 20th Century Preaching, and uh, gets into some of the dispensational uh, writers. Schofield, he talks about that. Uh, uh, Ironside. You've probably seen those little small volumes of Ironside's commentaries uh, that comes through that. Uh, he pastored up in the Chicago area. Arthur Pink, uh, if you don't know about Arthur Pink, now Arthur Pink's a Calvinist, and uh, he's very ardent into that. But I can also tell you that Brother Arnold, Brother Jeff Arnold, uh, very familiar with a lot of the works of Arthur Pink, especially his gleanings, uh, series gleanings from Genesis, gleanings from Exodus, uh, gleanings from Paul, gleanings from Elisha. Uh, those are all good books to have. And again, you have to be careful. Read with a filter, obviously. Um, but that was a that was a a good one. James Stalker. Um, hadn't saw that name in a while. Uh, James Stalker. If you can get a hold of some of his uh, books, that's again is a very another very good. Um, you know, person to to uh, do that. George McDonald. While I hadn't thought about him in years, George McDonald um, was a uh, another Scottish uh, preacher. He wrote novels, and some of his works. I think Bethany House published his books, and again, Christian fiction. Uh, but at the same time, brother brother Harold read read uh, fiction. I may talk about some of that. Uh, as well, but but again, what are we getting? I was talking about is this: is if you're going to be a good preacher, you got to be a good reader. And so, so as as society, the pace ramps up, and most of us probably feel like that our tongues are hanging out constantly. Uh, but you got to set aside some time to sit down and just to be able to read uh, those books. But George MacDonald, uh, another one. Uh, 
G.H. Morrison. Oh my goodness. Uh, Morrison, uh, and I've got uh, I'm looking across my sermon. All my sermon books are over here. I've got um, probably 12 volumes of G.H. Morrison. Got some of the newer prints, and I've also got some of the old um, white. Their paperback uh, that G. H. Morrison had, uh, Brother Harold, a uh, number of times. Dinsdale Young, wow, uh, that's a good one. Obviously, G. Campbell Morgan. Uh, if you don't have his Westminster Pulpit, uh, you need to get you a copy of that set. It's about a ten-volume set, and uh, that set is downstairs in my lower area of my study, and. Um, He's got just very, very good uh, things that he has to say. I guess the one that probably stands out perhaps maybe the most uh, was the one that was called The Crisis of the Christ. And he goes through very uh, deals. F.B. Meyer. Uh, now, I was familiar with F.B. Meyer, but Brother Harold talked to me about He did a series, and again, this is all old. Maybe some of the folks in Bridge City may uh, remember this, but he talked to me about this one time, about he did a series uh, of sermons on the life of Peter. And I think that in that series was probably 10 to maybe 15 messages uh, that, that he did, and that's going to be maybe in the 80s. Uh, I'm guessing out of that little, and it's all guesswork uh, because I uh, I don't have a copy of all of his sermons. And so, uh, anyways, but I do remember that series that he did on Peter. And Brother Harold told me uh, that he used uh, F. B. Myers' uh, works on on um, on Peter, and that set is right over here. Uh, and I've got those. I've got the one on Abraham. I've got the one on David. I've got the one on Peter. I've got the one on Moses. I've got the one on Joseph. And so, uh, if you can, you can swing it. You definitely need uh, to to find some time to spend with F. B. Meyer. The other part is F. B. Meyer uh, had is uh, comes from a strong holiness background. And so whenever you read some of his devotional writings about holiness, you can sense that there's a closeness that, that F.B. Meyer had uh, with, with holiness. And I, again, I, I know that Ecclesiastes warns us. He says, don't look back to the latter years and say, oh, those were the best days and et cetera. But I'm at the point now, I guess, where I'm kind of doing some looking back and I'll make some comparisons about preaching uh, now versus some of the preaching that I perhaps may have, you know, heard and even did in the past. Here's the difference between a between a, a lot of the sermon, if you even want to call it that, because sermon books now are becoming very hard to come by. Uh, but here's what I see with a lot of modern uh, sort of ministry deals: got an entrepreneurial flair uh, to it, and it's more about how to build the church. Uh, than, it, uh, than it is about how to build a soul. And the preaching that Brother Harold did, and somebody made a comment, I was reading through some of the blogs that I had written uh, back in 2011 at his 40th anniversary. One of the saints in Bridge City, I don't know who it was because it, they, they, it was, they, they made the comment as anonymous, but they said that Brother Harold was very keyed into principal preaching. And um, I, I feel like that you know, it's it's not so much now seven ways to balance your check. We don't even have checkbooks now, but you get what I'm saying. Um, but Brother Harold preached principles, and those principles helped you to be able to connect with the Lord and to realize that if you let that the principles that he's bringing out, that it's going to be helpful uh, in in your walk, and so again, back to F. B. Meyer, um, he had some some very good th the the character studies, the series that he did uh, on Peter. Another one, uh, J. H. Jowett, uh, that was another one that Brother Harold uh, talked to me about. And um, so, uh, anyways, I've been going now for twenty minutes and. 
and uh, so I'll get to something else here in the next one. In fact, the good the good stuff is the more I do these, the more thoughts are being stimulated of some of the things that Brother Harold told me. So, uh, anyways, Lord bless you. Thank you for stopping in. And again, thank you, Bridge City. Uh, Brother Harold was a tremendous preacher, but he had to have a pulpit. And Bridge City, you provided that place. But the, the spillover that came out of that pulpit affected, I would say, thousands of people um, that they were able to benefit uh, from what Brother Harold did. And his encouragement and the standard that he set uh, should be something that all of us are striving for. So, till next time, thank you for stopping by.